All right, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us on our Facebook Live feed. We have did this, I kicked us off a couple of weeks ago, and I uh, had no idea that we would still be going uh, a few weeks later, but here we are. And so have had so many of you reach out to me and just say how much these devotions have meant to you and, and how God's been using them in your life. And uh, we are so grateful uh, that we've been able to do that and that our church has been able to stay connected uh, through this time with one another. Uh, here, here's what I want to do today. Uh, I woke up this morning and I was looking at some of the headlines. And I'm just going to read a few of these to you. Uh, one headline was, Long Hours of Darkness Are Ahead. Uh, another one here said that we should be bracing for levels of tragedy reminiscent of the September 11th attacks and the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Another headline says the new coronavirus may never be completely eradicated from the globe. And so those are some of the headlines that you see in the news. But there's another headline that you don't see. And the headline is that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. And that's the headline that we get to celebrate this week. And, and not that to, to diminish any of these headlines, but as I read these, I say, you know, that's what we can see with our physical eyes. But what we can't see with our physical eyes is something much deeper. And it's the fact that Jesus Christ overcame sin and death. That this week we celebrate the fact that the tomb is empty, the stone has been rolled away, and we have a hope of eternal life. You're not going to turn on the news or go on you know, social media and see the headline of so-and-so passed away, but in an instant they were transformed and they were standing before Jesus Christ in eternity in heaven. That they were in paradise. You're not going to see that headline, but that sort of thing happens every single day. And we get to worship that. We get to celebrate that this week as we prepare for Easter. So here's what I want to do this morning for you. I want to walk you through three verses in the Bible. And I hope that these will encourage you. I hope that these will challenge you. And I hope that they will sort of help prepare you uh, for the week that we have ahead. So the first one I want to share with you is Psalm 121. And uh, one of our board members had emailed this out to a few of us on leadership team. And uh, this is a psalm that I've always loved. It's a, it's a psalm that has been, uh, there's a song set to it. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful psalm. But I started reading it again. And David writes this. He says, I lift my eyes up to the mountains where does my help come from? And that's the question I think each of us has to wrestle with today is where is your help going to come from? Are you thinking that if you just keep scrolling, you're going to see a, a positive headline and you're going to say, oh, okay, now I feel a lot better about how things are going. Probably not. But we look here and he says, where is my help going to come from? And he says, my help is going to come from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And if he is the maker of heaven and earth, then he is completely in control of the world. He says, he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. In other words, God's never asleep. God's not caught off guard. He's not surprised. He doesn't read one of these headlines and go, oh my goodness, like I do not see this coming. He says, he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Then it says, the Lord watches over you. He is your shade at your right hand. And I want you just to picture that this week, that, that as you go throughout your life, God is right there with you. It says, the Lord will keep you from all harm. I love that. That is so good. The Lord will keep you from all harm. Now, does that mean that Christians will never get diseases? Does it mean that Christians will never go through difficult things in life? No, of course not. But in some sense, God is going to protect us. It says that he will watch over your life. Think about that right now. As all the things that are happening in our world, all the headlines that are going on, there is a God who is watching over your life. Not just the world, not just everybody else. He's watching over your life. He says he will watch over your coming and going, so God doesn't have much to watch these days. There's not a whole lot of coming and going. We're all just kind of stuck in our houses. So God's, God's got a break there. He will watch over your coming and going, both now and forever. And that's what I want to remind you of today. That you have a God who's watching over you. And if you need help, if you feel like right now, like I need help, you can call upon his name and he will hear you. He will be right there with you. Here's the second verse that I wanted to share with you this morning. And it's from Colossians chapter 3, and it says this, Since then you have been raised with Christ, 
Set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Two different times he says, set your hearts on things above, and then he says, set your mind on things above. And, and I realize that in the world we live in today, I can go on and I can watch 24-hour news that tells me all the things that are going on here on earth. And I can get more anxious and I can get more worried and I can start to fear that, you know, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And I can play out all the what ifs in my mind. Or I can set my heart on things above. I can set my mind on things above. I can focus on things as Second Corinthians talks about chapter four. I can look at the things that I can't see. I can focus on the things that I, that I can't see with my physical eyes, but, but they're just as a part of reality. He says, set your heart, set your minds. I love the word set. If you have your Bibles out with you this morning, just, just take your pen and circle that word. Because to set something is intentional. You don't just stumble into a heart that's set on the things above. You don't just stumble into a mind that's set on the things above. You, you actually have to be intentional. You have to set your heart. You have to set your mind. And I, I just wonder this week, what if some of us said, you know what, I'm going to fast a little bit from social media and from the news. Not to live in a different reality, not to bury my head in the sand. It's good to be informed. But, but I've talked to some people this week, and a good person, a person I really trust, said, you know, I just had to take a step away. Because I could see what it was doing to my spirit. I could see what it was doing to my heart and to my mind. And I needed to just devote myself to the word of God and to prayer and to setting my heart and my mind on the things above. And it's a perfect week to do that as, as we begin to move towards Easter and celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ is not dead, but he is risen. And the hope we have of eternal life. What a time to say, you know what, I'm going to take this week and every day I'm going to spend some more time with God. As bad as this coronavirus is and as 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 horrific it has been for some people's lives, there has been some positives that I have seen God doing. And one of them is he's making us slow down. There's nothing else to do. There's no sports. There's no kids activities. There's no school. And, and so all of a sudden you have this time. And I'm just encouraging each of us today. What if you use that time to set your heart and set your mind? And what if you use that time to connect with God in a very real way and to prepare your heart to celebrate Easter like never before? You know, I saw someone this week say, you know, on social media say, oh, it's going to be so horrible not to be able to celebrate Easter. I thought, we're going to still celebrate Easter. We're, 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 Easter is not about gathering in a certain building. Easter is about setting our heart and minds on the things above and going, you know what? Jesus Christ is not dead. He is alive. And so we're going to set our hearts and minds on that. Here's the final verse that I wanted to take you to. It's Luke chapter 8. And it's the story about being in a boat and Jesus is sleeping and the disciples are freaking out. And it's an interesting picture because Jesus is the one who has control. The disciples have no control. They can't calm the storm. They can't help everything to, you know, go back to normal. They, they can't cause the waves to stop crashing over the boat. They have no power over that. And Jesus does. And yet here's Jesus. And he's in the boat and he's sleeping and the disciples are freaking out. It says this in Luke 8. It says, they went and woke him up. They said, Master, Master, we're going to drown. And I wonder if any of us feel like that today. I wonder if any of us feel like you are going to drown. You're not going to drown in, in a wave of water, but you feel like you're going to drown in a wave of anxiety. You feel like you're going to drown in a wave of isolation. You, you feel like you're going to drown in a wave of loneliness. You feel like you're going to drown in a wave of depression. You feel like you're going to drown in a wave of the circumstances and events that are going on in our world today. And you are going to Jesus and you're going, wake up, wake up. I'm going to drown. 
And I want you to notice a couple things. First of all, it says that Jesus got up, rebuked the wind and the raging waters, the storm subsided, subsided and all was calm. And then he turned to his disciples and he says, where is your faith? And that's the question for us today is, we can live in fear or we can live in faith. We can choose to try to control things that are out of our control. Here's the reality. You can't control the coronavirus. I can't control it. We, we can do our best. We, we can try to, you know, do social distancing and, and flatten the curve and all these other kinds of things. We, 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 can, we can do what we can do. But ultimately, I don't have any control over the coronavirus. You don't have any control over the coronavirus. Jesus, though, is in control. Jesus is in control of the world that we live in today. And so when Jesus starts to freak out, that's when I'm going to freak out. <laughs> when, when I get the news that Jesus is up in heaven, just going, oh my goodness, I am freaking out up here, then, then I'm going to freak out. But until that time, if Jesus is in the boat and Jesus is just, you know, taking a nap, why are the disciples freaking out? Why are they freaking out over something that really they have zero control over? All that they can do in that moment is trust the one who is in control. And as human beings, that is so hard for us to do. It is so hard for us to say, you know what, I'm just going to have to try. I don't have any control in this. That's a horrible feeling, but I'm just going to trust the one who is in control. That's difficult to do. But I am telling you today, that's all you can do. I've, I've said to people around me, I'm just going to trust God through this. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what tomorrow brings. I don't know what this week is going to bring. I can read the headlines and I can hear it's going to be a really hard week. But I can also think about the unseen reality that I have a hope that goes beyond this life. I have a go hope that goes beyond this grave. And when I have that hope, even though I can't see it with my physical eyes, even though I don't go on StarTribune.com and, and read that headline, I live in that hope and that reality every single day. And so I can't control what's going to take place. All I can do is declare my faith and my trust in the one who is in control. And Jesus is in control. He is in control of your life. He is watching over you. He, he's not sleeping. He's not slumbering. He's not freaking out. And so if some of us today, this afternoon, you, you might just need to take a nap. If Jesus is going to sleep in the storm, there's there's might be an opportunity for you to say, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to rest. I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to do the socially responsible things. I'm, I'm going to do all that. I'm going to stay informed. But ultimately, at the end of the day, my hope, my trust is not in this life. It's not going to be found on my phone. It's not going to be found on my computer or my tablet. My hope is in the promise of Jesus Christ that the tomb is empty and the stone has been rolled away. And sin and death have been defeated once and for all. It's going to be a great week. On the one hand, it's going to be a horrible week. And I hope you're praying for people who are on the front lines of that. You know, first responders and people who work in hospitals. Hope you're praying for those who are out of work. Hope you're praying for those who are really struggling in, in this time. But I also hope that you are taking some time to go, you know what? There's something that I can't see that's much bigger. And it's the hope that we have in Jesus Christ couple ways for you to celebrate that with us this week. We've got a Good Friday service that's going to be different than our Easter services. So we would encourage you to tune in at 7 o'clock on Friday. We normally don't do a Good Friday service because we're already having to do Easter services at our physical locations in order to get everybody in. But we're going to do a Good Friday service this year at 7 o'clock. We'd love to have you a part of that. And then we start broadcasting our Easter services on Saturday at 4 and 6, Sunday at 9 and 11. Uh, the message that I'm going to be speaking this year is going to be about the power that God has to change your life. And if you know somebody who is looking at their life right now and going, man, I, I really would love to see God working in my life in a powerful way. I would love to see God working in my life to change some things. Because one of the things I've noticed about being quarantined is there's some stuff that starts to come out of you that you're like, oh, I didn't even know that was in there. Maybe some anger or some irritability or some sharp language and words that you you know that hurt other people and and so we all need God to change parts and aspects of our lives. We we all need the Holy Spirit to come in and to bring a a, a big change. So we're going to celebrate the power that God has to change a human being's life. We're going to celebrate the power that Jesus Christ has over sin and death. And if you know somebody who needs to hear about that, 
who is in a situation in life right now, it's never been easier to send them an invite and say, hey, would you tune in four and six on Saturday, nine and 11 on Sunday morning as we celebrate the hope that we have in Jesus Christ? I am looking forward to seeing all of you face to face again. Uh, someone sent me a funny video, I think it was Chris Farley coming down the aisle of, of a church or like a theater, and he was just going nuts. He was high-fiving people, and I said, this is every pastor when we're able to physically open our physical locations again. Uh, I think that's how I will be on that opening weekend. But until then, uh, we will continue to be the church. We will continue to be the people of God who walk in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. I hope you have a great morning, and we will see you tomorrow morning. Uh, at 7 o'clock again. Thanks, everybody.